Welcome to our historical journey as we delve into the life of one of history's most transformative figures, Constantine the Great. From the military barracks of the Roman Empire to the heart of its political labyrinth, Constantine's rise to power is a tale of ambition, faith, and a quest for absolute rule. In this video, we will explore how a young boy born in the ancient city of Naissus became the first Christian emperor and reshaped the Roman world. Join us as we uncover the early life, the battles, the strategic alliances, and the divine visions that led Constantine to the throne. If you're fascinated by the complexities of imperial politics, the intricacies of ancient warfare, or the profound impact of religious transformation, then you're in the right place. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content into the lives that shaped our history. Now let's step back in time to the era of Constantine the Great. Constantine the Great, a figure pivotal in the transition of the Roman Empire from a pagan to a Christian entity, began his life in the Balkan region. Born around 272 AD in the city of Nasus, now known as Nias in present-day Serbia, his early life set the stage for a remarkable journey from a son of a military officer to the Emperor of Rome, reshaping the empire's religious landscape. His father, Constantius Chlorus, was a respected officer in the Roman army, ascending through the ranks to become one of the four emperors of the Tetrarchy established by Diocletian to bring order to the Roman Empire. His mother, Helena, was of humble origin, but her Christian faith would later play a crucial role in shaping Constantine's beliefs and policies. The young Constantine was sent to the Eastern Empire to be educated under the watchful eye of Emperor Diocletian in Nicomedia, present-day Izmit, Turkey. This education was not only military but also administrative, preparing him for future leadership roles. In 293 AD, Constantine's life took a significant turn when his father was elevated to the rank of Caesar, a junior emperor of the Western Roman Empire. Despite his father's new status, Constantine's own position remained somewhat ambiguous. He was valuable as a potential hostage due to his closeness to the imperial family, but also held as a reserve for future military and political use. The year 305 AD marked a turning point in Constantine's career and the political landscape of Rome. Diocletian and his co-emperor Maximian abdicated their thrones as part of the Tetrarchic succession plan. Constantine expected to be elevated to a higher status, however, he was initially overlooked. His father, now Augustus or senior emperor of the West, called him to Britain, where he displayed notable military prowess, particularly in campaigns against the Picts and other tribes, The death of Constantius in 306 AD at Eboracum, modern-day York in England, propelled Constantine into the limelight. His troops proclaimed him emperor, a title not officially recognized by the other Tetrarchs. This acclamation by the army set Constantine on a collision course with Maxentius, the son of Maximian, who also claimed rulership in Rome, and with the Eastern emperors who viewed his ascent with suspicion. Constantine's early reign was marked by political maneuvering and military campaigns as he sought to secure his position. He formed alliances, most notably through his marriage to Fausta, Maximian's daughter, strengthening his claim and political connections. Despite these ties, Constantine found himself in a complex web of tetrarchic rivalries and power struggles. The stage was set for a series of civil wars that would eventually lead to Constantine's undisputed rule over the Roman Empire. His strategic acumen, military might, and political maneuvers during these early years laid the groundwork for his eventual rise to sole emperorship and the transformational role he would play in the history of Rome and Christianity. The blend of his father's cautious pragmatism and his own ambitious vision prepared Constantine for the challenges and triumphs that lay ahead. Constantine the Great's rule as Emperor of the Roman Empire marks one of the most pivotal eras in the history of the West and the Christian world. His ascent to power was not just the culmination of a series of civil wars and political maneuvering, but also the beginning of a transformative period that would reshape the Roman Empire's cultural, religious and political landscape. 
After the death of his father, Constantius Chlorus, in 306 AD, Constantine was declared emperor by his father's troops. However, his claim to the throne was not uncontested. The Roman Empire was divided among various rulers due to the tetrarchic system established by Diocletian. Constantine's initial rule was marked by alliances and conflicts as he navigated the complex tetrarchic relationships and sought to consolidate his power. The defining moment of Constantine's ascent came in 312 AD at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge against Maxentius, who held Rome. On the eve of the battle, Constantine reportedly had a vision where he saw a cross in the sky along with the words in hoc signo vinces. In this sign you will conquer. Embracing this divine sign, he had his soldiers mark their shields with the Christian symbol the Chi Rho. The ensuing victory was not only a crucial military success, but also a turning point that cemented his rule and influenced his religious conversion. Following his victory, Constantine issued the Edict of Milan in 313 AD alongside Licinius, the Eastern Emperor. This decree ended the persecution of Christians and granted freedom of worship throughout the empire, a radical shift from previous imperial policies. Constantine's conversion to Christianity, whether immediate or gradual, led to the faith's elevation from a persecuted sect to a religion that enjoyed imperial patronage. During his reign, Constantine initiated significant administrative and social reforms. He restructured the Roman government to eliminate remnants of the Tetrarchy, establishing himself as the sole ruler. He also introduced measures to stabilize the economy, including the introduction of the Solidus, a new gold coin that would remain standard for centuries. Furthermore, Constantine shifted the empire's focus eastward, founding the city of Constantinople in 330 AD as a new Rome. The city was strategically located, reflecting the empire's shifting center of gravity towards the east and its increasing orientation towards the Christian faith. Constantine's relationship with the Christian church was complex and proactive. He actively involved himself in church affairs, calling the First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD to address the Arian controversy and other doctrinal issues. While his engagement significantly shaped the development of early Christianity, it also intertwined the church with imperial politics. Throughout his reign, Constantine continued to face military challenges, including conflicts with the Franks, Goths, and the Eastern Emperor Licinius. Each campaign and conflict served to strengthen his control over the empire and assert the dominance of his rule. Constantine's rule profoundly influenced the religious, cultural, and political fabric of the empire. His policies laid the groundwork for the Byzantine Empire and the spread of Christianity as a dominant force in the Western world. His reign, marked by religious transformation, military conquests, and political innovation, continued until his death in 337 AD. Constantine's legacy, characterized by the Christianization of the Roman Empire and the establishment of Constantinople, cemented his status as a pivotal figure in Western history, earning him the epithet the Great. Constantine the Great's rule as Emperor of the Roman Empire marks one of the most pivotal eras in the history of the West and the Christian world. His ascent to power was not just the culmination of a series of civil wars and political maneuvering, but also the beginning of a transformative period that would reshape the Roman Empire's cultural, religious and political landscape. Before Constantine, Christianity was often subjected to periods of intense persecution under various Roman emperors. Christians were marginalized and their practices were forbidden. The faith, however, continued to grow in numbers and influence, drawing adherents from across the social spectrum, despite the risks associated with open worship. The exact circumstances of Constantine's conversion have been the subject of much debate among historians and theologians. The most popular account, propagated by the Christian bishop Eusebius of Caesarea, tells of a vision that Constantine experienced before the pivotal Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312 AD. 
According to Eusebius, on the eve of the confrontation with his rival Maxentius, Constantine looked up to the sun and saw a cross of light above it, along with the words in tutoto nika, in this sign conquer. That night it is said that Christ appeared to Constantine in a dream, instructing him to use the sign of the cross against his enemies. Prompted by this divine encounter, Constantine reportedly had his soldiers mark their shields with the Chi Roho, a symbol representing the first two letters of Christ's name in Greek. The subsequent victory over Maxentius not only solidified Constantine's control over the Western Roman Empire, but also convinced him of the power of the Christian God. Following his victory, Constantine's policies towards Christianity underwent a dramatic transformation. In 313 AD, along with Licinius, the Eastern Roman Emperor issued the Edict of Milan. This proclamation granted complete religious tolerance throughout the empire, effectively ending the persecution of Christians and allowing them to worship openly. It represented a significant shift from previous imperial policy, setting a precedent for the eventual establishment of Christianity as the state religion. Constantine's embrace of Christianity was both personal and political. While his faith appears to have been sincere, it also served to unite a fragmented empire under a single, increasingly popular religion. His conversion was a gradual process. He was not baptized until shortly before his death in 337 AD, which was common at the time due to the belief that baptism washed away all sins. As the first Christian emperor, Constantine's reign saw the beginning of a Christian Roman Empire. He extended patronage to the church, donating vast tracts of land and wealth for the construction of churches and promoting Christians to high offices. He also played a significant role in shaping the structure of the early church, presiding over the First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD to address the Arian controversy and other theological disputes. However, Constantine's conversion did not lead to the immediate Christianization of the empire. Pagan practices remained widespread and Constantine himself maintained certain pagan titles and honors. Nonetheless, his reign drastically altered the trajectory of Christianity, elevating it from a persecuted sect to a leading power within the empire. The conversion of Constantine is a cornerstone in the history of Christianity, signifying the faith's transition from the margins of society to the halls of imperial power. It set the stage for the rich Christian heritage of the Byzantine Empire and shaped the religious landscape of Europe for centuries to come. Constantine the Great's conversion to Christianity not only marked a pivotal shift in his personal beliefs, but also had profound and lasting impacts on the religious policies of the Roman Empire and the structure of the early Christian Church. Upon his conversion, Constantine initiated a series of religious reforms that fundamentally altered the religious landscape of the empire. One of his first major acts was the issuance of the Edict of Milan in 313 AD in conjunction with Licinius, the Eastern Roman Emperor. This decree officially ended the persecution of Christians, which had been sporadic but at times intense under previous emperors. The Edict of Milan granted religious freedom to all citizens, allowing them to worship any deity they chose and restoring properties confiscated from Christians by the state. This act of tolerance marked a significant departure from previous policies and laid the foundation for the growth and institutionalization of Christianity within the empire. Constantine's support for Christianity went beyond mere tolerance. He provided generous patronage to the Christian church, donating funds and properties for the construction of churches, basilicas, and other religious institutions. Notable among these were the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, built on the site traditionally considered to be the location of Jesus Christ's crucifixion and burial, and the old St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. These constructions not only served as places of worship, but also as symbols of the legitimization and establishment of Christianity within the Roman state. Constantine's relationship with the Christian Church was complex and hands-on, 
he saw himself as both a political leader and a spiritual figure, referring to himself as the bishop of those outside the church and believing it was his duty to maintain unity within the church. This belief led him to involve himself directly in ecclesiastical matters, most notably in the Arian controversy a theological dispute regarding the nature of Christ and his relationship to God the Father. In 325 AD, in response to the increasing divisiveness of the Arian dispute, Constantine convened the First Council of Nicaea. This council brought together bishops from across the empire to discuss and settle the theological issues at hand. The Nicene Creed, a statement of faith that rejected Arianism and affirmed the Trinity's co-equal divinity, was a significant outcome of this council. Constantine's role in the Council and his endorsement of its decisions were crucial in the Creed's acceptance and the establishment of orthodoxy within the Christian faith. While Constantine did not make Christianity the state religion of the Roman Empire that would come later under Theodosius I, his policies increasingly favoured Christianity over pagan religions. He passed laws that reflected Christian ethics and morality including regulations on the observance of Sunday as a day of rest and worship, restrictions on pagan sacrifices, and measures to protect slaves and the poor. However, Constantine's religious policies were not solely beneficial to Christians. He maintained a degree of religious pluralism throughout his reign. He continued to support traditional Roman religious festivals and practices, and his coinage often featured both Christian and pagan symbols, reflecting the diverse religious landscape of his empire. The religious policies of Constantine the Great had a lasting impact on the Roman Empire and the Christian Church. His conversion to Christianity and subsequent support for the Church facilitated its transition from a persecuted minority to a dominant religious force within the empire. Constantine's patronage of the Church, involvement in doctrinal disputes, and promotion of Christian morals and values through legislation significantly shaped the development of early Christianity, establishing a foundation that would influence the religious, cultural, and political trajectory of Europe for centuries to come. Constantine the Great's reign was marked not only by significant religious transformation, but also by a series of administrative and social reforms that reshaped the Roman Empire's governance, society and economy. These reforms were aimed at stabilizing the empire, which had been racked by internal discord and external threats, and at consolidating his own power. Administrative Reforms 1. Restructuring of the government Constantine significantly altered the Roman administrative machinery. He dissolved the Tetrarchy, a system of rule by four co-emperors instituted by Diocletian, which had led to civil wars and instability. Instead, Constantine centralized authority around the emperor. He expanded the administrative bureaucracy, creating new governmental structures that allowed him to exert greater control over the vast empire. 2. Provincial reorganization to improve governance and tax collection, Constantine reorganized the empire's provincial divisions. He increased the number of provinces, reducing their size to make them easier to manage and less likely to foster powerful, potentially rebellious provincial governors. He grouped these smaller provinces into larger administrative units called dioceses, overseen by vicars which further centralized imperial control. 3. Capital relocation, perhaps Constantine's most significant administrative reform, was the founding of Constantinople as the new capital in 330 AD. Strategically located on the Bosporus, this new Rome served as a political, economic and cultural hub, bridging Europe and Asia. The establishment of Constantinople shifted the center of power to the eastern part of the empire, reflecting the region's increasing importance and the decline of Rome's influence. Social reforms 1. Legal reforms Constantine enacted numerous laws reflecting Christian moral values. He outlawed practices considered inhumane or pagan, such as gladiatorial games and infanticide. He introduced laws to protect the rights of widows, orphans and the poor, echoing Christian teachings of charity and compassion. 
these laws aimed at creating a more moral and equitable society. 2. Slavery and serfdom While not abolishing slavery, Constantine passed reforms to improve slaves' conditions, including laws that made manumission easier and more beneficial for slaves. He also took steps that inadvertently laid the groundwork for medieval serfdom, particularly through legislation tying peasants more closely to the land they farmed. Economic Reforms 1. Currency stabilization to address the rampant inflation and economic instability plaguing the empire, Constantine introduced the Solidus, a new gold coin that remained stable and in use for centuries. This monetary reform helped stabilize the economy and facilitated trade across the empire. 2. Tax reforms Constantine overhauled the tax system to make it more efficient and equitable. He instituted the Capitatio Eugatio system, which assessed taxes based on land and the number of people working it, rather than on the land's estimated productivity. This system aimed to distribute the tax burden more fairly and to reduce corruption in tax collection. Military Reforms Constantine reorganized the Roman military, separating civil and military authority to prevent military governors from wielding too much power. He expanded the army, created new elite units like the Palatine Guards, and developed a more mobile field army that could respond quickly to threats along the empire's borders. Cultural and Religious Reforms Constantine's conversion to Christianity influenced his social policies and led to the promotion of Christian culture throughout the empire. He funded the construction of churches, promoted Christians to high-ranking positions and integrated Christian symbols and values into the public and political spheres. Legacy of the Reforms Constantine's administrative and social reforms had a lasting impact on the Roman Empire and the subsequent Byzantine Empire. They provided a foundation for the medieval European political structure, influenced the development of Christian society, and contributed to the longevity of the Byzantine Empire. Constantine's policies reflected his vision of a unified, stable and Christian empire, and they left an indelible mark on history, shaping the trajectory of Western civilization. The foundation of Constantinople stands as one of Constantine the Great's most enduring legacies, marking a pivotal moment in the history of the Roman Empire and setting the stage for the rise of the Byzantine Empire. This ambitious project was not only a demonstration of Constantine's power and vision, but also a strategic move that would reshape the geopolitical landscape of the ancient world. The choice of Byzantium, a modest ancient city located on the Bosporus Strait as the site for the new capital was strategic, the location offered significant military and economic advantages. It controlled the passage between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean and lay at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. This position allowed for easier defense against barbarian invasions and provided a central hub for trade routes. Moreover, the peninsula on which Byzantium was situated could be easily fortified, making it defensible against both sea and land attacks. In 324 AD, after his definitive victory over Licinius, Constantine began the construction of the new city. The design and development of Constantinople were undertaken with grandeur in mind it was to be a reflection of the empire's majesty and the Christian faith's emerging prominence. Constantine expanded the city beyond the old town of Byzantium, laying out its streets, squares and public buildings with deliberate care to symbolize the new Rome. He incorporated elements from Rome and other great cities of the empire, ensuring that Constantinople would inherit their cultural and political legacy. The city was adorned with a plethora of artworks, statues and monuments transported from across the empire, making it a center of Hellenistic and Roman culture. The construction of the city's defenses was a priority. The walls of Constantinople, a formidable set of defensive walls, were built to secure the city from external threats. These walls would prove to be one of the most sophisticated fortifications of the ancient world, standing against sieges for over a thousand years. 
Constantine imbued Constantinople with a strong Christian identity, distinguishing it from the pagan traditions of old Rome. He constructed the Hagia Sophia, a magnificent church that would become the central place of worship and a symbol of the city's religious significance. Additionally, he built the Church of the Holy Apostles and other significant churches, establishing Constantinople as a center of Christian theology and pilgrimage. Constantine's new capital was conceived as a reflection of the empire's renewed unity and strength. By moving the capital from Rome to Constantinople, Constantine shifted the political center of gravity eastward, acknowledging the growing cultural and economic importance of the eastern provinces. The city was populated by merchants, soldiers, administrators and artists from across the empire, becoming a melting pot of cultures and a beacon of the classical heritage and Christian faith. Constantinople was officially dedicated on May 11, 330 AD and declared the new capital of the Roman Empire. The city's strategic location, formidable defenses and cultural and religious significance ensured its survival and growth long after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. It would stand as the capital of the Byzantine Empire for over a thousand years, earning the nickname the Queen of Cities. The foundation of Constantinople marked the beginning of a new era in Roman history and left a lasting legacy on the medieval world. The city not only served as the seat of the Byzantine Empire, but also as a bridge between East and West, a focal point of Christian pilgrimage and a bastion of classical knowledge during the Middle Ages. Constantine's vision for Constantinople would see it become one of the most important cities in the world, a legacy that endures in the modern city of Istanbul. Thus concludes the remarkable tale of Constantine the Great, a ruler whose vision and reforms transformed not only the Roman Empire but also the course of Western civilization. From his strategic military victories to his unprecedented support for Christianity and the monumental founding of Constantinople, Constantine's legacy is a testament to his profound impact on history. As the sun set on May 22, 337 AD, Constantine passed away after a reign that forever changed the trajectory of the Roman Empire and the Christian Church. Baptized only on his deathbed, he left this world as the first Christian Roman Emperor, leaving behind a legacy intertwined with the foundation of a religion that would dominate the Western world. Constantine's final resting place, the Church of the Holy Apostles in Constantinople, symbolizes his enduring legacy, a legacy of religious transformation, architectural grandeur, and political strategy. His death marked the end of an era, but the beginning of a new chapter in the history of Europe and Christianity. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life and legacy of one of history's most influential figures. If you've enjoyed this exploration into the life of Constantine the Great, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more historical insights. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Until next time, keep seeking the stories that shape our past and guide our future. Farewell.